All right. So for today's live stream, we will be starting to go through all of the modules. Um, the plan is eventually to go through uh, all of the modules in the collection. So um, we're going to start, yeah, at A and try and get through all of them. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's over 100 modules on uh, Bebo and Hector nowadays. So, um, yeah, we'll just be trying to get through all of them and uh, explain kind of what they do, how to use them, because some of the modules aren't currently very well documented. So if there's ones in the future that you've got particular questions about, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear. Um, please, yeah, ask any questions that you do have, uh, and I'll try and answer them as I go along. Um, yeah, so, and there's uh, some new, new modules coming as well. So we'll start off with, um, yeah, these ones, envelopes. Um, so there's one with a level and one without. So what is an envelope? Or envelope generator in this case. So there's a couple of them under A. So A is for attack, attack decay envelope, and attack decay sustain and release ones. So if we add one of these to a thing, and we drag that over here. Um, so you'll see it's a CV generator, so it generates control voltages. Um, so it won't actually make any sound of its own. It'll change something else. So um, I might I might get rid of some of these things in this patch for the moment. Um, and all right, get rid of these guys. Um, so it will be changing our uh, levels of something. So if we have a, a VCA, for example. We can add a VCA here. Then, um, if we want, uh, this one can control the level of this one. Is the idea. So, what other controls that? Attack time and decay time. This one's a pretty straightforward module. Uh, so, all of the envelopes will work the same kind of way. So, basically, it's something going up and something going down. So you can use it to control your volume. Um, you can use it to control any other parameter that you want to change over time after some type of trigger. What type of trigger? Um, well, you need something like a step sequencer or a Euclidean sequencer or a drum pattern or any of those. Any of those will be able to drive this to uh, do something. So yeah. This one can connect up to the VCA, and then you'll be able to control that, changing, using the levels to control the VCA or anything else. So yeah, again, this is a CV thing, so it'll control this one, and then this one will actually do things to the audio. That'd work with um, any of the uh, different CV things like that. So uh, we'll drop that out. So, uh, ADSRs work basically the same way. Uh, attack, decay, sustain, release. The main difference is they'll need a gate instead of a trigger. So these ones, a trigger is just an instant on off, whereas a gate's got some kind of time to it. Um, to skip ahead somewhat, um, there is a module that can convert between the two. If you've got a trigger, something that generates triggers, you can then tell how long you want those triggers to be. Say you want those to be a quarter note at 60 BPM, then that would be a particular amount of time. And then you can feed them into the ADSR. So um, the ADSR is quite um, basic. Um, I think I've broken things on my pedal. This is my development one. I think I have added weird things to it. I might switch to my other one, but it takes ages to add. I'm not 100% sure why. Hopefully that will be a thing that I've changed. Um, so yeah, ADSRs uh, have attack times, release times, decay times, sustain level. 
and what how what level they go off at. So that's um, handy for um, those curves. So how long it attack is how long it takes when you have the gate turns on for it to get to its max level. Then uh, release, you've got it goes down to the sustain level and then holds there until the gate ends and then it has your, its uh, decay time. Um, so yeah, you can use these to control, again, these are CV generating things. Um, so, uh, I don't know why I didn't attend you better, I'll get rid of that guy. Um, yeah. I am, yes, fundamentally confused what's going on there. Uh, so, um, yeah, ADSRs uh, will be that, um, yeah, just the same kind of envelopes. Again, it's a uh, control, control voltage -y thing. And then, um, yeah, as I'm going, just feel free to ask uh, questions and I will attempt to glance at them. Hopefully you can hear what I'm saying as well. Um, cool. So, um, yeah, envelopes are pretty useful. Uh, there are other envelope generators. Um, you'll, you'll notice that one of the, there's a very complicated fancy one all the way up in L, uh, the um, looping envelope, which is a big fancy envelope generator. Uh, there are a couple of other things you can use as envelopes if you want, but these ones are handy for the basic kind of needs remembering that they can control anything. So if you want to have something that triggers, you have a trigger that goes off for some reason, like it detects the start of your signal, it detects uh, some pattern, you can then make complicated tremolos with that if you want, or you can make it change uh, phases of flanges, anything like that. So any of these things are uh, random question. What's the DSP platform you use on Poly? It is a, I'll stick to mostly the related stuff to the modules, but it's um, an ARM based system, a 64-bit ARM, a quad-core Cortex-A53 specifically. Um, that's why we can do lots of things, because it's got a bit of oomph. Uh, so, uh, what am I, yeah, sorry, stay on target. Uh, ADSLs. So yes, there's a bunch of different types of envelopes. They all work basically the same way. Um, the level one is a little bit more complicated. Um, so the difference between this one, the attack decay to a level, that one you don't really want to use directly connected up to something that does audio because it will click if, if you do, because you can set a level that it goes to. That's handy for when you're doing um, things to your CVs are controlling something that isn't uh, sound though. Like say you're wanting to control a, a delay time that changes or something like that. This might be exactly the tool for the job, but if you're connecting this level one up to a VCA, um, if it's if it's attack two and decay two level levels aren't the same, when it starts again, it'll click because it'll be, if you're quickly changing between uh, ones that aren't the same. So watch out for that with the uh, 80 envelope level. The normal one obviously just goes all the way to zero, so it's it's safe. Um, so yeah, on that that front. All right, uh, amp base. Uh, that one's pretty straightforward. Um, this is a simulation of an Ampeg SVT. Uh, it's okay-ish. Um, I added these quite a few years ago for uh, a trade show for NAM, and I would summarize them as okay-ish. Um, so yeah, we are working on some newer um, AMP modeling stuff. Uh, this is actual AMP modeling. Um, we are working on some capturing stuff instead, which uh, is much nicer sounding. Uh, this also eats a ton of CPU for what it does. Um, I can run through it though. Um, so, um, 
yeah, controls are obvious, re relatively clear. So you got the EQ, bass, middle, treble. Um, where the your mids and lows are active. Um, what's your volume? Um, turning off your highs. So basically, whether this, you know, the these switches that change the character of the cab, but the, sorry, the amp. And then there's one that turns on and off whether the, the cab is simulated. Um, usually you want that off and you'll add one of the IRs. There's a bunch of IRs of suitable cabs, um, including lots of the you know SVT fridge kind of stuff, um, or like a 115 or something, which would complement well. So I would probably always keep cab switch off unless you have some reason that you particularly like the sound of that one. Um, so yes, definitely connect. So just route this one to an IR um, using the cab sim loader one, mono. So yeah, I'll get rid of that guy. And then we will look at what's next. Um, so, uh, attenuverters. Uh, these can be useful for other things. So an attenuverter attenuates or inverts. So basically you can make stuff quieter or you can um, uh, invert it, change the phase of it. So if it's going, uh, if you've got a signal that's uh, currently, you know, plus five, uh, plus half or something, 0.5, and you invert it, it'll be minus 0.05. Uh, this is sometimes useful um, if you want something to go in the opposite direction. Um, you want it to decay when it's going to attack. Um, if you want uh, two parts of a signal to go in opposite, say you want to go to have them... Um, maybe you're feeding in an LFO that's controlling a uh, pan. Then you could feed it into two different things, one of them through an attenuverter, and then you could um, make them... Uh, go the opposite direction. So you could be panning one left while you're panning one right. That's a pretty easy use case. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a thing you could do with the attenuverter. And uh, through the magic of interconnect, um, if we add our friendly attenuverter, um, and we... I, I am sorry I broke this thing. Um, I will have to turn on and off again at some point. I've been uh, adding some new modules and coding some new stuff, which is uh, currently annoying. So yes, if we have this attenuverter, it's just got these two values. So it takes in two values and you can do things to them because um, it'll be multiplying this one by this one or the other way around. You know, it's multiplying these two values together. Um, so if you have this one all the way there, it'll be inverting. Um, obviously, this will be unity gain, and then this will just be quieter. So quieter and inverted. Um, so here is just inverted. Uh, how is this going to be useful? Um, if we run, if we turn on, if we, oh, sorry, if we go into settings and turn on interconnect mode here, interconnect mode, we can, um, audio and CV are treated the same in Bebo and Hector, um, but by default, you're not allowed to connect them to each other. But if you turn on interconnect mode, you can now uh, route audio to CV. So we can just route our audio into A, because and then we route this one, we can route that one out. Normally that wouldn't be allowed because that's a green signal going into a blue signal. But because we've got internet connect no mode on, we can do that. And now we're just inverting the phase of our signal. So our, you know, our, uh, this, if you want to make a balanced signal, you can use this. So if we've got our two outs, one and two, as a TRS connection, normally we'd be running that as stereo, but we could run it as mono balanced by um, inverting one of them and then running them to the uh, same, to one and two. One being the inverted signal and the other one being the not inverted signal. That would give you a balanced out. 
Uh, so, next. I'm not sure how many of these I'll get through. Um, Auto Swell. Auto Swell's fun. I might actually listen to it. We, we can listen to Auto Swell because it's actually fun. Um, and then we get into the fun stuff. Um, yeah, then we get into fun, fun stuff. Uh, Auto Swell. But yeah, uh, attenuate filters are pretty useful. You want to have them around the place occasionally for other stuff. Um, uh, I can't remember what else that could be useful for them. Um, you, yeah, you can use them on CV signals as well if you want to have them inverted for some reason or just reduced. Um, remembering you can reduce uh, things with lots of other modules as well. The VCA can reduce things. That's why I dropped one in here as well. VCAs um, reduce an audio with a CV input. Uh, the attenuverters can take two CV inputs. Um, but again, remember you can switch those around if you want. Um, just the scaling is different. Um, that, so that can be useful depending on what type of scaling you like. Um, whether the VCA, the scaling of that, the, whether you want an audio or a linear scaling to your uh, CV values. Uh, audio taper. Uh, so uh, let's auto swell for a bit. Again, sorry everything is a bit slow on my pedal. Um, I was playing with some stuff on the weekend. Yeah. So, uh, we don't need that, and we'll do that. Um, and we'll turn interconnect off now, because we don't need it anymore. Um, so, auto swells a pretty straightforward concept. Uh, it will, um, it's basically, you could build this, you could build this out of other modules as well, um, because you're just detecting a level and then having an attack and a decay. So it kind of, uh, oh, a detect, attack, a sustain it, and a decay. Uh, it fits in with um, some of the stuff we've dis discussed just recently with envelopes. Um, so you could, you could have an ADSR um, and connect up the onset generator and then have an auto swell built out of that. Um, but in this case, we, uh, we have um, it in all in a single module. Um, so, um, one second, I'll pick a burger. Um, yeah, and if you've got questions, I will try and keep an eye on them and see if I can see. I'm glancing occasionally at the comments, um, and I will get on to some of the other questions that come in. Ah. Um. Um, so. So you'll see that if I'm playing gently, we have to swell in. So we have to get to a particular level. That will be the whatever we've set threshold to. Um, and then we can choose how long it takes to swell in and then how long it takes to swell out. So I strum hard and we get that swell in. This might not be obvious over the mics because you'll probably hear the guitar as well as the, um, like the, the acoustic of the electric. But yeah, you can see how that See, so now we get that slow swell in. So the module's pretty straightforward. And again, it's how long it takes to decay and how long it takes to attack. 
So turn that up, the up time, which is the attack. Now it holds that. Because we're at above our threshold. And now, again. So yeah, you could compose this out of other modules, but it's kind of fun by itself. So that's the auto swap. Um, similar to stuff like the slow gear. Uh, um, so that can be fun for you. All your ambient needs. Uh, and we're up to B. I think I might just get B and C done, maybe. I don't know. Uh, basic reverb. Um, I don't really like this reverb very much. Um, so we've got a bunch of convolution-based reverbs, which are great. Convolution reverbs capture real spaces and uh, are very cool. However, convolution reverbs don't have uh, modulatable controls. So you can't change them over time. Uh, you have to control the signal going in or the signal going out, which is normally what you should do. I thoroughly recommend having modules on the send and the return, the input and the output of a convolution reverb um, because it gives you a lot of fun options. Sorry for those watching on YouTube. The stream appears to have stopped for a second there. Uh, yeah, some questions. Uh, a stereo in, stereo out, cab sim block would be handy. There is one. Um, though, um, I don't know what you'll what you use it for, truthfully. Um, Trying to think of examples where a stereo in, stereo out, cab sim block makes sense. Um, I think dual mono cab sims makes make more sense. Um, but if you can explain reasons where you want to use a stereo in, stereo out, cab sim, we have got it. I just don't know when you want it. Um, so uh, yeah, stereo in, stereo out, cab sims are up here. It's a quarter IR cab because to do stereo in, stereo out, you need a four channel WAV, a WAV file. Um, whereas, as it says, you don't want this unless you have special I, uh, IRs. So you'll need four channels of IR, which we can support there. And that'll give you stereo in, stereo out um, cabs. Um, normally, you, I don't think you'd normally want that. If you're running stereo, I'd usually think that I'd want to, unless there's a special case. Um, Unless you really have a stereo cab that takes stereo inputs and does something interesting to them. Um, I, yeah. Um, uh, normally I'd run two different cabs or something like that. Um, maybe you're running, if you're running stereo stuff, um, either I'd run two of the same cab um, or I'd be running two different two different cabs because I'm running two different amps or something like that. I think that would be a no more normal uh, stereo setup. Um, maybe you can run like, you know, uh, you know, a 112 or something on the other side and a um, 410 or something or as two different IRs and have them as two mono ones, um, which would be much, yeah, dual mono, just using the um, mono I uh, IR cab ones would be um, much more normal rather than the, the, the quad channel uh, dual stereo stuff. Um, uh, I, I 
Yeah. Um, so the... Yeah, I think in the case of uh, cabs, dual mono probably makes as, as much sense as quad channel because um, I don't think there are a lot of cases where... Well, I can't think of any uh, where you'd want... Um, things to need to spill between the channels. So you put something into left and it comes out somewhat out of right and somewhat out of left, um, which is the cases where you'd need a quad channel IR. But spill might be useful um, in some cases. So um, yeah. It might be a case that you want sometimes, but I don't don't really know of it. But it's a thing. Um, so, um, hopefully the stream is now working again on um, YouTube as well. Sorry, I don't actually know what was going on there. It just seemed to have dropped out for a second, but it's back. Um, the magic of Australian internet. Um, so, uh, yes, sorry, we are up. We just, I'm just going to finish off the rest of these. Um, so we've done those ones. We've done Bs. Bitmangle, okay. Bitmangle starts to get complicated. Um, so there is a bit more information about Bitmangle on the internet because it has, is actually, as it says, a port. It's a port from one of the mutable instruments ones. The other ones are all uh, not ports. Basically, um, so did I already add back mangle? No, I'll add a bit mangle. Um, so the bit mangler is quite different in a lot of ways to the bit crusher. Um, it's much more aggressive. Um, really, you probably want some way to control volume after it. Maybe a compressor or um, something else. Uh, it does have some interesting features, though. All of these things are modulatable over from an LFO or a CV or anything like that. Oh, I should have kept a looping envelope in here. Um, uh, it's also got its own built-in oscillators, which can be useful, because the way the bit mangler works is you're mangling two signals together. Um, sometimes you can be mangling against silence, um, which will get you relatively sensible behaviour, but you can mangle against um, an oscillator as well or any other signal, and that can be quite interesting um, because there's options for how uh, the signals are mangled against each other, uh, whether they're exclusive or, that's what XOR means, so that's if either of them are above a particular level, are either a one, or if either of them are. So obviously and is gonna be a lot louder than or. Um, uh, uh, so, and this one says amp or frequency. That one's a little bit confusing because it's either controlling the amplitude of the other, of the input, the other input, um, or it's controlling the frequency of the internal oscillator if you have an internal oscillator turned on. And, um, oh, we'll run through how it sounds. Um, we'll keep some clean in there as well to start with, maybe. I'd probably run a wet dry normally in here, but you could run two VCAs in case you wanna control the clean separately. So, let's. So this is where it gets complicated. Carrier or modulator? Um, so again, it, there's two different signals. One is um, things happen to one of them and the other one. So basically, you've got a, a signal that's getting modulated by another signal. Really, the vocab of carrier and modulator, really, they could just be A and B. But it's, um, there's also an internal oscillator, which can be the, the other um, you know, modulator. Um, so we'll choose carrier. Um, and 
Um, then we've got our uh, normal out. And we'll run that into here. Normal out. So the auxiliary out is um, going to be the waveform of the internal oscillator, which you can run by itself as well. So you can have that going out to something else. I'll just get rid of this basic reverb. Um, run this out to one and two, three. Uh, turn this guy down to lots. All right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yep, so... Okay, cool, that stream seems to be working. Good. Uh, so, yeah, probably B will be the end of our stream for today, probably. Um, so, we've got clean signal there as well. Um, probably we've turned down our VCA a lot. So. Yeah, there we go. Um, I'll just kill my clean as well. So this is the bit mangler mangling bit. gets pretty aggressive, as you can tell. If we try it. If I give it a more aggressive input signal, it's still basically just turning it first. Crunch. So, so if you want pretty aggressive stuff, that works pretty well for that. This is how ma much mangling you're getting. Oh. So zero is totally, and then clean, and then you're going to get tons of mangling up here. which can be fun. Um, so again, the this one would be quieter. And and gets very hectic. We'll turn down VCA a little bit because the next bit will get crazy. So you notice there's a sort tooth wave there. Controlling frequency. So this can be kind of Up with that. Um, you'll notice eh, if I 
switch these guys around which signal they're connected up into so we're connected to carrier there uh, if we connect to modulator instead more aggressive. Now you're not getting as much of the being able to hear the, um, the carrier. Apart from when you're playing. Still pretty aggressive. Uh, but yeah, as you crank that up, you will. That's kind of fun. Um, so yes, you can get some fun sounds out of that. Um, see that it's very different whether you connect something up to carrier or to modulator um, when you're using the internal uh, oscillators. Because yeah, you'll want to have the internal oscillators as the carrier. as the guitar input. You can see how the internal oscillators are changing how that behaviors. That's quite a pretty aggressive module, but quite powerful as well. And remember that all of these things are modulatable, all of these parameters. Um, so you can have this come in and out over time, do things like that. And also, the, um, these are selectable. Uh, and um, you can run different signals in. You don't have to use the um, built-in oscillator. You can if you want. Um, but you can also run other oscillators into here which is, um, yeah, a pretty powerful technique um, because you've got a bunch of different oscillators available in case you want something um, more or less uh, aggressive than that bunch of craziness. Um, uh, pitch shifting, yep. Um, pitch shifting will be coming up, uh, there'll be, yeah. So I'm planning to go through all of these, um, through every single module. Um, obviously, they're going to take a little bit of time. Um, but I'm going to try and get through every single module in the list. Oops, I just touched my guitar. Uh, 
Turn that guy down. Uh, I'm going to try and get through every single module in the list. Um, there are over 100. Uh, but we will get up to that one. The best pitch shifting at the moment is the time stretch. Use the time stretch. The, uh, the pitch shifting and the time stretch is very flexible. So you can do um, uh, microtonal stuff if you want, or you can do uh, pitch shifting to actual normal notes. Um, somebody was asking about uh, pitch shifting via microtonal. Um, Yeah, so you can definitely do that. Um, uh, there was also a question about uh, latency in Bebo and whether there's anything I'm going to do about that. Um, one of the challenges, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Um, I can change, it, it is possible to change the latency in Bebo from a programming point of view. Um, however, uh, if you, have, if you introduce more latency, you get um, uh, more time for processing. So you get more processor power. If you introduce less um, latency, um, then you have less time. So you've got less um, CPU, DSP resources available. Um, one of the things that's different in Bebo than some other systems is that the latency is um, is basically fixed. So if you run 100 VCAs into each other, um, in some other systems, uh, those will have, though each one will contribute latency. Like in um, VCV rack, I think works like that. Um, uh, some other pedals definitely work like that. Um, each one will uh, contribute latency. Um, whereas in Bebo, the latency is fixed. If you have 100 VCAs running into each other, like in a cascade, they'll have exactly the same latency because everything is processed as a, as a block, um, which is either good or bad. Um, it means that our latency is, is fixed, um, basically. Um, obviously, if you're running signals into a delay, the, the signal comes out later because that's the point of a delay. Um, but for all other, for normal modules, um, e everything is... Um, fixed in uh, time, uh, ones that don't introduce purposeful latency, um, which, yeah, which makes things like having sp like triggers line up properly and stuff like that for complicated patches much easier. However, it, it does mean um, that our maximum size, our maximum latency is somewhat, um, is often higher. Uh, you know, sorry, our average latency is, is, is higher because it's fixed. Um, yeah. So um, I do have some ideas about how to make that e better, but they're, none of them are particularly easy. So, um, yeah, I've been, I've been putting them off and avoiding them. Um, so, yeah, uh, if anybody else has got some last-minute questions. Otherwise, so, yeah, um, we went through. You can see that, you know, Bitmangle's a really powerful and complicated module, uh, especially with the, the carry and modulator kind of stuff. Um, I definitely recommend trying to connect up the signals in ways that um, make sense. If you're using, it, it's going to be more uh, interesting uh, when you've got two different signals, like two different, like a uh, guitar and a um, uh, an oscillator going into it. Uh, so either the macro oscillator or the LFOs or anything like that. Um, remembering that you can connect audio and CV together if you want. Um, but yeah, it's got its built-in oscillators as well. So definitely um, remember to, it can get very loud, so a VCA after it is quite handy. Um, and uh, remember that you'll probably want your guitar as the um, modulator and you want the carrier to be um, the you know an oscillator or either the inbuilt one or the other an oscillator that you put into the other input and then you can get some fun noises um, we ran through ADSRs and A's B's bit crushers bit manglers um, I think yep 
Um, next week, hopefully, we're going to knock through them a bit faster, and we'll, we'll start with Chaos Controller next week, which is a big, fun, exciting module. Um, then courses and the pile of things that make up C and D. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and keep knocking through all of these, um, hopefully at an ever-increasing pace, um, so that there's a bit of documentation around about every single module, because I find at the moment that there are some that are um, either underutilized or you know, a bit less um, used than they should be or misunderstood. Um, yeah, one of the things I didn't show is that um, the Bitmangler has got um, links to the original documentation because it's based on um, a module from Mutable Instruments, the Eurorack module, um, so warps. Um, so there is videos about how to do things with warps and manuals um, for warps, which you can get to with these QR codes here. Um, warps is a very powerful module, so it's definitely very interesting to you know, check out more about that. Um, there's lots of good videos about how to get the most out of warps. So um, remember, yeah, there are some modules that are ports from other things, in which case um, there will be other videos around and other content around that can give you more information about how to get the most out of those very some of the very powerful ported modules. Um, this video, with this series, I really want to make sure that there's some good documentation about all the ones that aren't ports, just because there isn't anything about them, like the bit, like that bit crusher or something, or the bit crush delay. There's no information about them on the internet because you know they're original stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll just glance if there's any other questions, and then I'll be off for this week. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I should turn that down. Uh, I think that will be the general gist for today. Thank you for everybody who's watched. I hope you could uh, hear me across the platforms. Um, give me a yell if that sounded all right on um, Instagram as well, because yeah, I kind of just have my mobile phone randomly positioned somewhere. Um, yeah, thanks very much for checking out the stream. And yeah, uh, give me a yell if you've got questions for things that you want um, in the future. Um, uh, cool. All right, thanks very much for checking it out. And I will stream again, hopefully next week. <laughs>